It's Mercer's voice. So here we're gonna make our citrate and PVA uh, cross link membranes. These things can resist acids and strong alkali, but when ran in a cell, they still f they still have failure at high concentration gradients and but they can seem to also take higher current density. So anyway, I'm using this uh, clear glue. First, I just pour in however amount I want. Since I'm making a larger membrane, I think I'll pour around that much. Actually, you know what, just, 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 just the fun and all thing, honestly. This glue is basically pure PVA solution in water. So there's almost nothing in it except for what we really want. We pour just an arbitrary amount of citric acid. It doesn't really matter because the the uh, second step is gonna get rid of any excess. Okay. Actually, no. The third step is gonna get get rid of any excess. The second step is sort of just there. So the next thing we do is we then heat this thing on the stove, just basically cook it. What this will do is this will incorporate that citric acid in its structure. Or I don't really know what it's doing, honestly, it just fucking works. But I think that's what's going on. You just have to let it dissolve. It, it will not cross-link right away, that, that's going to be the next step. You have to keep mixing it so it does not uh, you be careful not to burn it. I think that's it. Oh, oh god. <coughs> Next we'll be preparing, we're preparing the curing solution. So you need sodium hydroxide for this thing. You can either buy this or make this with a cruder borate membrane and then you know the usual so you need a highly concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide. So just pour however much you want. It's a curing bath, so you don't need any exact stuff and you just need some water as long as it's deep enough for curing that's that's all that friggin really matters over here and it's thick and syrupy To test it, you can get a drop of your original mix, and if it hardens into a polymer, then then it's working. Let me get my original mix. Alright, so here's the original mix in a stopper. Let's see if it uh, cures. So you can see, those two blobs are polymers now. And there's a bit of original mix in this spoon. This will all polymerize if I dunk it in here. So you can see, once it once the sodium ions get in it, it cross-links. End up with a polymer stuck to the stuck to the spoon. It's it's no longer a syrup. It's now a plastic. Well, it's kind of a rubber, really. I'm not gonna touch this without gloves, but. You'll see it later anyway. Alright, so what you want to do now is you want to then start painting it. You know, this, this glue no longer really feels like the same glue. It's sort of a thinner syrup. Which is kind of what you want. Just evenly mix it so that the citric acid is evenly distributed. Mm. 
me start painting it. Just like the previous membrane, it's also painted on. Because I'm unlike the previous membrane, it's not that easy to repair this if it breaks in the cell. Hence so why I still think borate is better. If you know you don't know if you're not doing any real runtime calculations, you're better off using borate. It's like using MMO versus graphite. If if you can if you know what you're doing, then MMO is better than graphite. But if you don't know what you're doing, you might as well use graphite. Just so that it's just, you guys saved them, sorry, you know. I'm gonna place this somewhere else because friction keeps uh, messing with my uh, coats. Because I have to do everything one handed. Put it on top of this thing. There we go. Now I can paint one handed without much of a big problem. I have to do a very good first coat for this thing. Another like, downside to this method is it uses a lot more polymer than the other method. You also get a very lighter polymer. It's not as uh, heavy as the borate ones because it doesn't have a lot of water in it once it's done. Anyway, the first coat always consumes a massive amount because you're, unlike the previous coats, which is just the surface, the first coat, you actually go into the layers of fucking uh, cloth itself and that's why it's consuming a lot of uh, glue just to get, just to get the very first layers impregnated. It's really annoying. <laughs> I think this is good though. Yeah, this is good. It's, it's feeling damp all over. And now the next step is to dunk it in the sodium hydroxide. This, oh wait, I forgot, I have to do the other side too. Don't forget to do both sides, because if you only do one side, then coating's not gonna be even. Uh, another massive waste of polymer, but okay. Uh, I have more, I'll just buy more. I can... Yeah. I just woke up, so my mood's not the best right now, you know? If you just wake up, then you're obviously gonna feel like crap somewhat. That's just how it is. Yeah, I think that's good. Everything feels nice and sticky. Right. We move on to the next step, which is we dunk it in the curing bath, which starts the polymerization reaction. Shake it. You can't really see anything going on, but you you will know once you pick it up. And you leave it in there for approximately a minute or two. The hands may get sticky from having the polymer, but once it's in there, you can no longer use your hands to handle it. You need to use uh, gloves, which I will get. Okay, here's the next step. So I have my gloves. You can take this out of the solution. It's quite hot. If it's a fresh solution, right now it's okay. So you just have to take this out of the solution. It dribble for a little bit. You know, since this is an old cloth, some of it is some of this dye is leaching in, but that doesn't matter because it's all going to be coated in a polymer anyway. So you do that, you then put it into one of these things. And now the pressing. So you can't really do this one-handed, but I'm going to try to get a good angle. So you just keep doing this sort of thing. Except this does not work well with gloves. You have to like press it like this. And when you do, that water or whatever comes out the sides. You want to repeat that until there's no more water in it. Or at least not until there's no more. This also does another thing which consolidates the polymer. So you want to do this as well. And then you have to apply more layers after this. After washing it of course. Because you don't want your polymer to instantly cure. Once you've pressed enough for all the solution to uh, react. And then open it. In the very first coat, you don't really see much of a polymer layer, but it is there. When you put your hand over it, it does feel a little slippery. You'll notice it with the further coats. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wash this, wipe everything down, and recoat it. Okay, so after washing, it was quite tough because alkali really likes to stick. Anyway, there's a visible coat of polymer on the surface, and that's good. Overall for this demo, I'll just be doing two coats, but you really want to be doing up to five or three or however many you want. I haven't really fully experimented with the ideal number, the 
The way to test that would be the ion conductivity test. Maybe you can make several membranes of the same size and all. And, but you guys do that work and tell me how it goes. I do this work just to show you how to get started with all that madness. <laughs> anyway, you just paint it like before, two sides. The excess citric acid is good in this case because it neutralizes any sodium hydroxide that's formed in the surface. Not formed, that's, that's still in the surface and in the polymer layers. And even if there is some that will react, you know, a little bit of cross-linking during the second coat is not a big deal. You just don't want it to entirely be unable to get off the brush and end up like a gel, which happens a lot with, when coating it with borate. That's actually a common problem and it's quite annoying. So, you're not going to face this problem with uh, citrate uh, cross-linked membranes. But anyway, once you're done, you just flip this mad guy over. You do this side as well before dunking him in back into the hydroxide bath. After you're satisfied with the amount of coatings you do, you kind of just want to dry this guy. <laughs> However, you can't just dry because the sodium hydroxide is hygroscopic. So what you usually do is you end with an acid wash, either using citric acid or hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid works better. It's just a stronger acid overall. It'll react way faster and better. And since these membranes are resistant to even concentrated hydrochloric acid, they're pretty resilient overall. <laughs> it's just that when they fail, it, it's really annoying to replace them. And they fail at certain concentration gradients and current densities while current is running through them due to the ions fucking around and pushing out the polymer or something. I don't know how exactly they fail. Let me just drop it in here, shake it, so that it gets in. Now you can really see that polymer start to develop. You can see like a really gel-like film on the surface, which is what you want. Earlier it was barely visible, now it's clearly there. So, I mean, you already know the steps. After you do this, you then, you know, fold, fold the usual crap, and then you wash it, and then you repeat. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat this a few more times and show you the acid washing step. Okay, so here, you notice our polymer really has that coat. It's really visible now. So now, we take our hot citric acid or concentrated hydrochloric, whichever one you choose, and we just pour it. We leave it in there for about 30 minutes to completely react and destroy any remaining sodium hydroxide. This will not affect the polymer layer in any way because once that polymer cross-links, it, it pretty much is resistant to whatever except for current, the high current apparently, or current density, or concentration gradient apparently, but it will be resistant to most things. And right now, you kind of just want to keep it in here. Just pretty much keep it in there, and then afterwards, since I use citric acid, I have to wash it with baking soda, if you use hydrochloric, you don't need to because the problem with citric acid is it's hygroscopic and you don't want any hygroscopic groups in your thing because then drying will be a pain. So since I use citric acid, I have to do an extra step. Hydrochloric is preferred. I just, I'm just like, oh, you know what? Let's try it with citric acid. It should also work. And in fact, it might work better because any... It would probably also harden the membrane because it would cross-link even more by reacting with whatever hydro was it fucking hydroxide is left. Okay, so now it's in a bath of sodium bicarbonate. This was after the acid washing. This is just to react the remaining stuff in it. And basically, after this, you're just gonna dry it out somewhere and. That should be fine. It's like five minutes before my own the online lecture, so I have to attend that shit, you know. And this would conclude the video. I mean, after this, you pretty much know what to do. You just dry it out and you're done. <laughs> and hopefully your membranes go well.